Hey, Frank, um, obviously coming home and, and doing what you've been doing the last couple of games has probably been a surreal experience. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your development since you've gotten here and, and how you've been able to improve uh, and get to the point where you're one of the main targets in this offense? Um, it's been great. Um, been putting in a lot of hard work on and off the field, um, extra film, extra work with some of the coaches, and then just getting better. Um um, being consistent, catching the ball, um, footwork, stuff like that. Go to David Wilson from the Miami Herald. David. Hey, Frank. Um, uh, what has it been like being back home? Obviously, I'm sure like family and friends at games and stuff like that. Um, just kind of curious, just, you know, playing for the hometown team. Like, uh, has that kind of I don't know, change your perspective or anything? Just like, well, what has that experience been like coming home and, and playing well now for, for this team? Um, It's been great, Um, especially in the locker room. You know, a lot of those guys in the locker room, you know, I either played with in high school or played against and stuff like that. Um, So it's been great, really. Just a real, like, family atmosphere and just able to see my family whenever and just play in front of, like, you know, people I went to school with and stuff like that, people I knew my whole life. Go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Hey, uh, Frank, welcome uh, back home, and, and congrats on the success here in the, in the last couple of weeks. You, you've really been consistent. Um, you know, one thing your coach uh, Gaddis said the other day was that he, he wanted you to win, you know, more one-on-one -on -one battles. I'm curious, like, you know, what specifically maybe you're doing to, to improve that and then other areas that, that Coach Gaddis, you know, tells you every week, hey, you got to do this better, that better. Um, just being consistent with my details and everything, um, whether that's, you know, downfield, being consistent with maybe holding my line or, or being more consistent with judging the ball in the air, um, things like that. Go to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam. Hey, Frank, uh, congrats on getting your first UM touchdown the other day. Um, my question's about, about Tyler. Uh, you know, he had you know, some adversity earlier in the year. Uh, you know, got benched, went through all that and kind of came out stronger than, you know, he's been having a great couple weeks. Um, mm -hmm. What did you see from him first kind of dealing with that adversity and then how he worked and kind of increased like, you know, or, or what he did or what he changed, you know, in those couple weeks where he's gotten better? Um, he just continued to work. You know, it's football at the end of the day, you know, um, he's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But he's continued to put the work in each and every day, continue to prepare at a high level, continue to practice at a high level. And you know, with consistent consistency, like it was bound, it was it was gonna show. You know, no, I don't I don't think nobody was ever even worried or questioned him or anything, you know. It's just it's football. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you get in a funk or whatever you want to call it, but he's always been the same, Tyler and Doc. Have you guys, I mean, just you know, as his teammates, guys who work with him on a daily basis, you know, uh did you guys guys kind of gain more respect for him and how he responded to all that stuff? Um, of course, you know, um, you know, some guys, you know, could have came in and had their head down. Some guys could have, like, felt some type of way, but, you know, he just continued to put his head down. I mean, not put his head down, but continue to work, like, you know, continue to come to work each and every day and be a leader. Go to Zuby Charles from Canesport. Hey, Frank, I uh, just want to get your thoughts. I know you've been, you know, finding your group as of late and so has Kobe Young. But, you know, both of you guys being some of the newer members of the team, just what are your thoughts on him and, you know, how he's progressed as well? Um, Same way, you know, we and that receiver room together, you know, um, and just we just working really. Uh, continue to push each other, continue to hold each other to a certain standard. And, you know, we we just work, you know. Um, being consistent with our details and playing at a high level and catching the ball. Go to Luke Cheney from All Hurricane. Hey, Frank. So I'm just wondering, man, what are some things about Duke secondary that really stands out to you on film? Um, they're a great team, uh, great athletes. Um, they tackle well. Um, you know, we, we know they're going to send some pressure. Um, but overall, great team, disciplined team. I'm excited for the matchup. All right, got one final hand up. We'll go back to David Wilson to wrap it up. David, go ahead for Frank. Hey, Frank. Uh, last week they put you on a, a watch list for Comeback Player of the Year uh, award. And I know you had a lot of injuries over the last couple of years at, at Clemson. Um, obviously, fr from what we've seen, have been pretty healthy this year. Just how much has that helped? So just finally feeling 
I'm sure closer to 100, 100% than you've probably been in a couple of years. Um, it feels great. It feels great. Um, put a lot of time and effort into my body, make sure I stay consistent with that, take care of my body. And, you know, it's been great. Um, I feel like it's starting to show on the field and just have to continue to stay with it. Yeah, was it a process to just kind of get back to full strength here? Just like when, when were you kind of starting to feel good again after? I know you had, what, surgery uh, sometime last year, right? Yeah, I had the last like couple years. I had a couple sh- surgeries. Um, so just when I first got here in the spring, you know, I was I was really close to a hundred, and then after that spring, I knew I was I was definitely a hundred. So I was full go. I've been full go all year. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Hey, Daryl. Um, good. Thank you, Mario Cristobal. Today said a lot of nice uh, things about you. How would you evaluate um, your play halfway through the season? And what the biggest adjustment has been coming from Maryland to Miami? Um, the biggest adjustment is just like getting to know Miami. Um, it haven't been it haven't been difficult. Uh, I'm still learning, um, so that's a big thing. Um, I play. I say I can start to run, um, but I can get better at everything like pad rushing and just up my game more. And also, Daryl, you know, the tackle defensive tackles are sometimes the quiet contributors on defense. Um, yeah, how often are you getting double teamed and and how much pride do you take in contributing to um to the edge rush, rushers making sacks? I take a lot of pride in um do my guys. So we are one unit. Um uh, we are working together. Uh, I don't mind taking on double team. Like that's my job. I gotta do what I gotta do to make the team successful. So and, well, the other thing is you were talking about the culture, you know, Miami being a little different. Being, what's the difference between Miami and Maryland, even the culture, coaching, everything? Um, I mean, like, I'm back. I'm from Florida. It's just that I had to get back used to it. Like, being in the city, uh, it's just different. We'll go to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead for Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Um, just what have you seen from the Duke offensive line on film? Uh, looks like they're they're a pretty solid run blocking team. I think they've only allowed like eight or nine sacks so far this year. Just like a, what have you seen from them that they do effectively? And with, you don't have to give away the game plan or anything, but how do you kind of counter what they do? Uh, they 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 pretty they pretty solid. Uh, they pretty solid. Um, the D line have to be like on their jaw, like being all gals because they can take advantage of that. Like they're a uh, pretty decent um, group. But it was Zuby Charles from Kane Sport. Hey, Daryl. Just want to get your thoughts on, you know, the, that heavy rotation you guys have on that D-line and how that helps you. And have you ever been a part of a team that rotates so many defensive linemen so often? No, nah, I haven't. This is my first team. Uh, I love it. Like, it give me, like, my bro. Like, uh, I stay fresh and we all help each other out. So it's a good thing. Go to Manny Navarro from yeah. Hey, Daryl, I'm curious a couple things. Number one, just how strong are you, man? Like, how much can you bench press, squat, those kind of things, if you could, if you don't mind sharing some of those those numbers? And then uh, and then also, you know, do you study any, any NFL players, uh, you know, guys that, that you uh, – on your own free time, because obviously you study yourself, but, you know, guys that you try to take things away from? Yes. Um, I've been, like, like – Three, three eight to five, and I squat like six twenty five. Um, I got long arms on my bench, so it's really difficult. You know what I mean? Um, I, I try to tip my game for um, Davin Shapoy. He played for the Saint. Um, favorite. Uh, I I just try to like really just work on like extension and everything. Cause I got long arms, so once I know like I lock out, like nobody can get close to me, and I can tear our blocks. Thank you. Yeah. Got, got time for a few more for Daryl. We'll go to Marcus Benjamin from Canes County. Marcus. Hi, Daryl. Just wanted to ask about the Duke quarterback, Riley Leonard. He can get out of the pocket and and, and run around a lot. Uh, what have you seen from him on film? And what are you guys prepare? How are you guys preparing to stop him from getting outside of the pocket and running? I mean, um, he's a great player. Uh, he made plays with his feet. Uh, and on, like, we just got to be on uh, discipline and be in our gouts and, you feel me, get a good pad rush on them. We'll be straight. All right, got time for one more for Daryl. We'll go to David Wilson from the Miami Herald to wrap it up. David. 
Hey, Daryl. As Susan said at the top, uh, sometimes defensive tackle contributions can go a little unnoticed or, or underrated. Um, I'm just kind of curious, what, what do you kind of like view as your biggest strengths as a player? You mentioned your arm and you can that that shows up, I think, with some of the tackles you make. But just like what what is what what are the strengths that you like to try to play to? And uh, what, what do you feel like makes you a good player? Uh, stopping the run. We got to stop the run first. I love stopping the run. Uh, I take pride in that. Uh, so that's one of my biggest things I can do. So, yeah. So this will be a great opportunity for me to play Duke since they they say they um no more rushing the ACC. So it'll be a good opportunity. Hey, Lou. First off, congratulations on the ACC Specialist Award. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, how special team analyst Coach uh, Maloof has helped your game this year and how he's, you know, helped you better yourself. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Coach Maloof, you know, one of the analysts here. Um, he's obviously a good person to talk to. He's got a lot of NFL experience. So having him in the building is, uh, you know, definitely handy just to talk to him about not only college, but, you know, uh, football after after college. So it's been great having him in the building. Go to David Wilson from the Miami Herald. David. Hey, Lou, on that same kind of note, it's a, a unique thing you guys have, I guess, with not having a special teams coordinator, uh, a designated special teams coordinator on the on field, um, but having a couple of guys behind the scenes. Uh, just how how is, I don't know, how has it been different this year with that approach with having a couple of analysts who focus on it all the time during the week? And then I guess it's kind of all hands on deck with all the coaches on special teams. Just what's been the difference in terms of how special teams are run this year? Um, no, I think I, I like it. It's, uh, you know, Coach Cristobal is um, – you know, he's really involved in punt and all, uh, all the other special teams aspects, which, you know, is kind of similar to what we had before. Um, so it's just having a lot of voices. Like I said, a lot of good, really good coaches around the building that, that influence everyone. And, you know, it's really good to just, you know, pick their brains and, you know, a lot of, a lot of smart uh, coaches around that know a lot about special teams. So, you know, I think I've learned a lot this year and it's, yeah, it's really exciting. I'm really excited to get the rest of the year on track. Go back to Azubi. Hey, Lou, just, you know, special teams doesn't always get, you know, the praise and things that they deserve, but you getting recognized, you know, this week and then the past week, just what does that mean to you seeing, you know, your game be recognized on the national stage? Um, Yeah, it's always nice. Um, I think it's more of a team accomplishment. I think everyone plays special teams, you know, so it's good. Um, you know, I like I tell all the boys all the time that we've got pretty much – the best punt team in the country. I think all the boys running down there do a really good job. And um, yeah, I think just seeing some recognition for that is not only, you know, good good for me, but it's also good for them to see all their hard work pays off. They're the ones running down there, making the tackles, getting the stops on the, you know, before it rolls back towards the goal line and stuff like that. So it's a team effort and really proud of how, you know, the special teams units in all phases have been going the last couple, couple of weeks. It's been great. Go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Hey, Lou, um, obviously some great punting this last game in particular. I think you had four inside the 14-yard line. I know sometimes you can you can kick for hang time. Sometimes you, you go for that low-line drive and, and and bounce it. I'm curious, is, are those decisions you make? Is there anybody, uh, you know, is Coach Cristobal tell you what to do before you go out there? Or how do you sort of make those decisions as far as how you're going to kick the ball? Uh, yeah, you always want to get good hang time on the footballs. Um, it was really windy in the stadium on Saturday. Um, actually, really probably the windiest stadium I've ever played in. So I think I had five punts going into the wind and kind of had to really drive it, but they seemed to hang up there a little bit. And um, the last quarter got a couple, uh, you know, with the wind behind me. But as far as hang time, and you always want to, you always want to give the, the boys a lot of time to get down there. So I try to put a lot on it. But sometimes, you know, depending on wind conditions and stuff, sometimes you can't have to low drive it just so it doesn't hold up in the wind. So on the weekend, I had a couple where I had to really spear it so it didn't hold up. But um, overall, they they trust me going out there. They might tell me what, you know, what we're going to run, where to put the ball. But, you know, I think all the coaches trust me now. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how I, how I kick it. They just, they just know I'm going to get it there. So it's all good. I was going to ask you specifically just about the one that, that got pinned down at the two. That was more of a low line drive that you obviously angled. So I guess, was that something you, you knew going in, Hey, this is, this is something I got to do. Or, or was that something that, you know, the coaches told you, I guess, how did that sort of work out? Yeah. I just used the wind to the advantage. I seen the uh, returner kind of drifting over to the right. Um, so I didn't want to put too much hang on it. So kind of got it to the 20 and it rolled. It was actually perfect. It's exactly the you know, exact ball you want, you know, the returns get a little comfortable and start drifting up to the right. So, 
you always put one of those in there just to shake it up and it worked out really well. All right, last question for Lou comes from Adam Lichtenstein in the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead for Lou. Hey, Lou. Uh, congrats on, on getting specialist of the week. Um, from from practicing with him, what have you seen from um, Brashard Smith in the, in the punt return game? He's had a couple this year. That he's kind of gotten out, you know, gotten some good yardage on. Yeah, I'm super proud how brashard has been handling the last few games. You know, he had to step up after, you know, Strepo going down. So he's done really well. And, you know, I always talk to him, tell him how important he is to this team. And, you know, he did a really well on punt. Um, like I said, yeah, super proud of the kid. He's he's doing a really good job and he just needs to keep it up. And love having him back there catching punts. And, you know, he's an absolute nightmare for for other punters. Once he, he, he gets a little bit of ground in front of him, it's uh, it's all over. So excited to see him. Really excited. He's doing good.